Cover letters. I know that you saw it, but I'm really turning them. <laughs> they are time consuming. They can be, uh, but they are necessary, in my opinion. There are definitely companies that will not read them, they will trash them, they will not ever get read, but in my opinion and in my experience and in my belief, it is always safer to write one and have a story out there than if you don't and they don't know why you are interested or who you are. So if they don't look at it and they only look at your resume, your resume has to stand on its own, but a resume plus a cover letter isn't the best picture. For me, I can look at a resume and I'm like, ah, I don't know, and then I go to the cover letter and I'm like, oh, this person like, was they transitioned their career and this is why they took this path and this is why they're in Tennessee but they want to move to Dallas. Now I know because they told me they always wanted to live in McKinney and their family is getting ready to do that so they're trying to look for jobs. And it just helps, helps contextualize what the resume actually says. Uh, but you know, tell us, why are you interested? Maybe you tell us how you found us if that's relevant, right? You don't have to be like, uh, I'm applying because I saw your job on a job board. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're on job board, that's fine. That's not really compelling. You can just probably leave that out. But maybe if it was something more interesting, like a weird way that you found us or came across us and that context makes sense, absolutely share that story. Um, what else would be good and fun for you to know about you? You know, do you have like fun hobbies? Do you, do you have a connection to be one of our clients in the project that we've worked on? We have, that happens a lot. A lot of times people will say, hey, I was at the Ferrari Museum and then I saw like Blue's name on the wall and I didn't know what that was, so I looked it up and Look at all the cool work that you guys do. You know, that's something a little bit more interesting. Um, proofreading is huge as well. I'll say that a thousand times. Proofread, proofread, proofread. I get so many cover letters where people didn't change out the company name, which really just makes me feel like you don't care. But like, I had a guy that was like, I'm so excited to be applying to Saber for this job. It was pretty aggressive. <laughs> and we, we ended up switching the roles to more of a design role anyway. So I came on the back and I looked at Ruth and I was like, hey, you know, Change the role so I don't think it's what you're looking for. And I want to tell you now, with me, you did also forget to change the company name. And so I just want to let you know moving forward, you may want to pay closer attention to that. And he wrote me back and was like, I am so sorry, I'm so embarrassed. But it, it matters, you know, it's, it's perception. Um, and then I want to know, like, what did you what did you learn about my company, right? You went to my website, you took a look around, did you learn anything? Are you going to throw that back at me? What are you going to mirror back at me in, in the cover letter to tell me, like, you did any research at all? I'm not just like another company. Which again is tough, right? Like, you have to make every company feel like they're the ball of the ball. I know that that's very hard. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be like a, a novel that you write to every company. So um, I have a little, I have a little sample um, that I can read out loud to y'all. So dear Love Blue, a few weeks ago I saw a post on LinkedIn you shared about diversity and inclusion in design. As a developer with an affinity for design, I clicked into it and let me down a rabbit hole of other interesting pieces on this topic. I figured I would take a look at your website afterwards and saw that you're hiring for a front-end developer. While I've been happy in my current role, I noticed that Lifeblue has a heavy focus on designing outstanding digital experiences with their clients and their customers, and that sounds like something I want to be a part of. For the last few years post boot camp, I've been working in a front-end role and beefing up my shop to several different technologies. As an agency, I'm sure there's no set list that you always work with, but I've had ample experience in the usual HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, React, Angular, and a few others. You can check out my portfolio linked on my resume to learn a bit more about some of the products there and the struggles and triumphs I've encountered while creating them. I'd love the chance to chat about a role with your company as it seems like a place I can continue to learn, grow, and contribute something bigger than myself as a developer. Please feel free to reach out and contact me if you'd like to chat. I look forward to hearing from you. What do you guys think about that? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I wrote that myself. <laughs> This, like, I just kind of, I literally just sat and wrote this while I was finishing putting this together today. Like, this isn't super long, but that, I, this would be like a great cover letter. It's simple, it's not, like, I don't always expect this part, like, where someone has a super compelling intro, like, ah, I'm daydreaming one day, and then move tell them to the top. Like, <laughs> I don't expect that at all, but like, I've gotten stuff like this before. We're like, hey, I saw something you post on LinkedIn, and like, it intrigued me, and I clicked in, and I started looking around, and you guys seem really interested, like, that's it, you don't have to like, at all, but just like, hey, you, I saw something, and you guys were interesting to me. Here's a little bit about what I've been doing. Like, I'm, I'm happy in my role, but what you're doing, it connects, it resonates with me. Um, and then you can check out my portfolio, and where I'm going to talk about some of the struggles and the trends I had while I was working on some of these projects. And then, you know, like reiterating, like we're big about learning and growing 
contributing at, at our company. So kind of reiterating some of that stuff back. So this is like the maximum length I would ever want to see for a I don't want to read that that's like an entire page long. I'm just not interested. I don't think you're interesting enough for me to read that much about your friends. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but this would this would be you know more than enough to suffice and kind of give me a, a little bit of insight into why this person wants to work here. No, this is only a two-paragraph format. I don't I mean, I, we literally get to the point in interviews where if we're on the 
comments, Russell will be like, did they send a thank you note? And I'm like, ah, they did not send a thank you note. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Because to us, it's like, it's such a small thing, but it's such a huge thing. It's just a courtesy, right? We want to know that this person actually cares, that they're thoughtful. That's a huge part of our culture here. So even if it's not a part of that context culture, you don't have to use anything except for the plastic invitation to write it and send it off. And then they, they know that you followed up. So one question though, for thank you. Uh, everything that I've been taught, I, mean, I, I was taught this in Iowa, yeah. um, is <laughs> submit the address in your actual location and yeah. then um, physically mail it. You totally can. Um, I, I have always done that and it has gotten me every job that I've ever had. But there's not always time for that, right? Because especially in tech, things can move super quick. Right. If yes. you work for a remote company, maybe it doesn't work. So would you recommend getting the email address of the interviewer or everybody there? I would especially say, yeah, I would recommend trying to get the email address of all of the, of whoever was in your interview. Whoever's facilitating it, like for me, I will all provide that to people. Usually people can figure out, like, they'll kind of make a judgment on the naming convention and they're like, oh, that was Derek, that was Russell, so I'm going to do Derek and Russell at Life Blue. Um, they'll figure it out pretty quick. Um, but yeah, ask, ask whoever facilitated and set up the interview. Hey, can I have the email address? I just want to send it a thank you know, and they should send it over. If for some reason they don't want to, you can always just forward it over. And you can do both. Like I've had people do both, where they'll send an email and then like two days later I'll get an email. I'll get a mail email. Right. Or in the mail. So I have a question. Yeah. I was told that if you like interview with five different people, mm -hmm. you should send five different thank you notes, like written differently. Is that true or can you just send like a group? I think that's a little dramatic. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I would send it well, oh, so you mean five se you mean five separate custom emails? Yeah. I just want to say it's something different. Yeah. I don't know that that's necessary. I would send them individually rather than as a group. You could send it as a group. I don't know that it's a huge difference, but I don't think it's necessary to go like way out of your way. We've definitely had people do that. I don't think it's necessary. I, especially if, you know, if it's a large group of people, like that's a really, really long way to go. And you're going to get to the point where like it sounds kind of manufactured. You can just say, like, hey, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. I look forward to hearing from you if it's a really big group. Whereas maybe the person who facilitated it, like someone sent me a note saying, just to reiterate, these are the reasons I feel like I'd be a good fit for the job based on what I learned about the position in the interview or something like that. But I wouldn't customize it for every person. I feel like that's probably not necessary, but you know, again, feel it out. If the company culture feels like that would be the right thing to do, then I would do it. Otherwise, I would just make sure that you touch base with each of them so that way they kind of know that you appreciated their time. Because quite honestly, the bigger the company, the harder it is to get these people's time. It really is difficult. Like, uh, it's even tough for us. We're 30 people right now, but we're like understaffed. So like I have to fight real hard to get my, my team members time. And their time really is valuable. So they very much appreciate it when someone's like, hey, thank you for making the time to do that. Um, so I'll put the last two slides real quick. Top fail list. People are late and they don't give me a heads up that they're late. Or they cancel and reschedule multiple times. That sucks. If you don't have a good reason, don't do it. I don't care. If you have stuff come up, that's fine. If you your dog had a vet emergency or something, and I fully recognize, and I know it sucks that this is a double standard. Recruiters can do this to, to you as many times as they want, and you're supposed to tolerate it. I know that that blows, but do your best uh, to not cancel and reschedule multiple times. Of course, life happens. Any normal person should understand that. Just try not to make that a regular thing, because I've had people who literally will go like three rounds trying to reschedule with me, and I'm like, I'm going the next um, not answering questions directly in the interview, skirting around them, that's always a big red flag and not good. Um, not proofreading kind of letters and resumes. Not asking questions in the interview, I'm just like, oh, you're not interested, you don't want to know anything. I've literally had people say, I've heard everything I need, I need to know from the website. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the website. Because <laughs> I don't write a copy on some of it, and we don't say that much. Like, we say enough, but like not enough to know what it's really like to work here, that's bananas. Um, they can't articulate why they want to work here. Like, why do you want to work for us? You don't, again, you don't have to have some grandiose reason, but like, you should have something, even if it's like, I'm excited about the tech you use, you're like, I love your clients, or whatever it is. Have something. I don't, I don't know. Just like, yeah, I just need a job. All right, well, we might not be the best fit for you, but um, know yourself well enough, right? Do you work better on a small team or a large team? It's okay if you don't have a preference, but like, try to know yourself well enough to know what type of environment you're working, because that's going to help us assess whether or not you'd be a good fit here. If you don't like working on a small team, you probably shouldn't work at Life Loops. We're small teams, we're very collaborative. Um, you, gotta, you have to know those things so that we can interview each other.
each other and figure out a match. Because if it's not a match for you, you don't want to work here, we don't want you to work here, because then you're just going to be unhappy and you're never going to be really sad about it again. <laughs> um, and then not following up. So, realities. The reality is you all live in the FW. We are one of the hottest tech markets in the country right now. That's awesome for a lot of reasons, but it also sucks, right? It's getting competitive for jobs. It's kind of feel like that, right? You start to feel like a, the press of them when you start applying for jobs and they're like, yeah, a lot of people, we have a lot of applications. We do, but I'll be honest, most of them suck. So if you follow these basic rules, you're probably getting in the door. Um, but the advantage, right, is there's a ton of cool companies that are here. Like, it's awesome. And you can make good money because the demand is driving salaries up. So when Toyota comes to town and everything in California salaries, that's good news for all of y'all. That's driving the rates up. So there's a lot of advantages. But you gotta, you gotta put in the time. Mass blasting resumes and cover letters without editing them and tailoring them, it won't work. It's a pain in the butt, but you gotta put in the time. So building into your network, and then don't be afraid to show some personality. Like, don't feel like you have to be super sterile on your resume. The best resumes I got, we were talking to Zach, one of our designers. Uh, during our half week at Arkansas, I think he was talking to us about how his dad yelled at him and he wrote a poem for his cover letter. He read us the poem, and I had never seen it. We hired him, like, he had already applied with when I started last year, but he, so he was kind of already in our system. And he read us this poem and said, you're never gonna get hired. And he was like, you know what, Dad? You don't wanna hire me because I wrote a poem. I don't wanna work here anyways. And it was, it was true, we loved him. I love getting this stuff like that for a couple of years. So let it reflect your personality uh, because there's a lot to be gained from showing us a little bit of yourself because that's gonna help us figure out if you're a better fit or not for that. So. I talked a really long time, I'm sorry. Uh, but please feel free, um, I'm gonna write my email address up over there. Uh, I'm happy to connect you with any resources. I'm happy to look at resumes. I'm happy to look at cover letters and help you with any.